Okay, good afternoon, Sylvia, in this beautiful uh, sun bathing room. <laughs> How are you? Hi, Lena. <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I'm great. <laughs> awesome day today. Um, yeah, yeah, do you want to um, tell us a bit about you, like um, your little journey and who you are and what you're doing? How much time do you have? <laughs> <laughs> Years. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty long journey so um to cut a long story short uh i used to be an art teacher and um uh at the moment um i am writing my biographic story down so my my life story um and this is in the context of a project um, during lockdown because we were locked out of most things and somehow that process got started and now I've been working on it for more than a year and I'm on the last pages and it's fantastic it's really good exciting and you do as well awesome Japanese tea ceremonies and also pottery you do so many cool things but this were just a few um yeah so um yeah when i thought about um that i would love to share on this podcast something about journaling i thought of you and then we discovered that um you have written most of your life um diaries and also um yeah just journaled and um got into the process of things and um how to journal and What's good to journal? Oh, I stumbled into it book. as a yeah. teenager. No, I and just you enjoyed it. Into it because yeah. I was given three beautiful Oriental diaries in the 70s. They were pretty cool diaries. I just didn't know really what I wanted to put into it. And I started haphazardly copying something from the from the local newspaper because there were proverbs and um, quotes from famous people, um, poetry, and I liked it. There was wisdom there. In the normal daily paper, there was wisdom, not only good and bad things and mostly bad things, there was actually wisdom. And I started to collect it. And uh, because I didn't know how to use my own words to express my feelings or anything like that. So that's how I got started. And from there, it evolved over decades and decades and via visual journaling. I have actually arrived at a stage where I can put pictures and words together. Amazing. So maybe we just explain a bit what, what, what is actually journaling? What, what, um, you know, how can we just, yeah, what is it? <laughs> it's actually a really good question because what is it? Uh, what is the difference between a diary and a journal? Um, some people make a difference, but in a way there is no difference because uh, a diary just means a daily entry into yeah, somewhere of uh, recording maybe uh, events, things that happened. And a journal is a French word um, from jour meaning day. And journaling means you're recording something, <laughs> uh, maybe on a daily basis, um, maybe not. And like a diary, we entry into a diary every day if we can, but sometimes we may not. Um, but it is a repetitive form yeah, of uh, recording something. And here, my first uh, um, premise, uh, my first belief is that you need to give yourself all the creative license uh, that you can master and all the courage to do what you want to do. In your journal, yeah. Because I thought it's kind of, Hence, we have been through interesting times that no one has been through. And I'm sometimes thinking the same, that I wake up and I have so many thoughts in my head and I'm, you know, and um, 
sometimes you hear things here and there and like writing this or writing that or you know um maybe having a grateful kind of diary at night where you write what you're grateful for or something so i was like thinking this like a great topic to share with you because i think um it's actually kind of nice to get a bit like step by step how i could um i or pretty much everyone else that is listening um or wants to do it can learn um or start like a journal you know like start to write um things down or as you said so nicely be yourself express yourself in a book so if someone wants to start this kind of process what what do you think or recommend or would be nice to start with ah um it actually starts with you uh, and that's the process to have to go through and to find out how you want to start so you can stumble into it like I did when I was a teenager and just look at the empty book. <laughs> you can get yourself a book by yourself, a really nice, beautiful diary and start writing. You know, when you sit long enough in front of the empty page, maybe you think, oh, I could write something down. But very often we write something and we don't like what we write and then we stop again because What's the point of doing it? Uh, you know, we can write, this morning I had breakfast, um, then I went for a walk, then I met with a friend, and then I did this and then I did that, and there was somebody new I met, and now I'm going to bed. Uh, <laughs> you can do that every day, but um, you can also do the journaling more creative, and you can also do an inquiry while you're journaling, journaling, which means you actually find something out about yourself, um, who you are, how you are being in the world, and um, be open to whatever comes up, because there's the surface on which we live, and there is layers underneath that are probably telling more about us than we know then we sometimes want to admit, or then we show to others. And it's good if at least we know who we are um, and explore a bit deeper, you know, where maybe like I do at the moment, where do I come from and where am I going? Um, important is um, for me that I do actually an embodied inquiry. Um, I have uh, recently completed a master's in, in therapeutic arts practice, and that has, of course, helped me a lot um, to understand processes and to understand techniques that can help to, to go through an inquiry process. And that's what I have done, but I have done that even before that. And when I look at all the diaries, and in a moment, I can actually show you some examples um, of different ways that I have done it. Uh, and I feel, yeah, I have known that already, yeah, before I now have studied it and mm -hmm. can put um, a terminology to it and know what those techniques are. I have used them intuitively before. And that's something else that is integrated into body work and embodied inquiries um, where we work with felt sense that you have actually explored in another interview, as I know, because you know, I have seen it and I know the um, person, Varadi. Um, and I really love that technique. Focusing, that process. you mean? Yeah. Focusing. Yeah. yeah. Felt sense focusing, it's called. That's the complete work. But yeah, uh, there's a focusing school here in Melbourne, I think. But it's actually felt sense and felt sense focusing based on Gendlin. Um, um, yeah, that's what I am working with. Yeah. Do you want to show us your journals? Uh, uh, one one thing at a time because uh, it can be quite overwhelming. So okay, 
maybe we start at the start <clears throat> to make it um, a little bit easier. Because if we, if we want to get in touch with our selves, our inner selves, we actually need to focus on the moment, uh, the present moment and on our bodies. And what I was going to say was that, um, that uh, innate wisdom is actually in our bodies. That's where mm -hmm. we find it. You know? We have a head, we have a heart and we have hands. And of course they are working together. <clears throat> but we can actually, as human beings, we have a tendency to disappear into our heads or we are all heart or we are all body. <laughs> Sometimes we can actually you know, um, be dominated by one area. Um, and if we are in our head, um, we often go into the past or we go into the future. So we go back to the things that we have experienced and that may be have, that may have been really good or that may have been troubling or we go into the future because we have had an experience in the past and then we go into the future because we fear something like this could happen again or you know we are already uh, worrying about something that could happen that hasn't even happened yet so important is that we find a safe space for ourselves and as an art um, therapist, I know that it is very important for people to have this safe space to start with. And if people want to use journaling in a therapeutic way, self-healing, that is possible. It's a really good thing to do. Many psychologists and um, art therapists work with it. But there is also um, care to be taken because if, if uh, anxiety is overwhelming, then you might actually need some support by somebody who actually knows what they're doing because experiences, body experiences can be overwhelming if something is triggered that comes up from the past and that we project then into the future and we don't feel safe anymore. So that's what I have to be uh, putting into the front um, and say, okay, if you feel at any time unsafe, then maybe look for somebody who can you support you in that process. Otherwise, yeah, you're absolutely fine exploring and doing it yourself and use it for your own healing and um, have fun with it and really be creative. Who would you say to, um, to just uh, make that clear, like who, who can support you? Um, what exactly you said when someone feels anxious, like what kind of support uh, would you recommend? Um, if somebody is anxious, it depends in the degree, a degree of yeah, being anxious and having real anxiety that uh, that is threatening um we are social beings and yeah, it may be already the presence of another person can actually calm us down because we are together in the present moment and the other person can actually hold the space for that mm -hmm. for that person and all is fine you know you're here you're with me it's all good yeah nothing can happen uh and they, they can point out that we are actually here and yeah, we'll look around, look at the ceiling, look out the window, everything's fine, no? Yeah? Nothing wrong. Oh, I was just in my head, no? Projecting or something was triggered. Um, so you could just um, work with a friend, you could work with another person you meet somewhere who has also an interest in journaling and do it together. Um, can be more fun. You can work apart, but you can also share something. Uh, you could work with an art therapist. You could work with a psychotherapist if you think there are big problems and if you get really stuck 
and that triggers you. Mm -hmm. so yeah, I think it's I, just good to know to get an idea that someone not, yeah. doesn't think I need a Problems psychologist and, next to me to do journaling when I have anxiety. Yes. Um, and so I never start because I don't want to see a psychologist. So I just wanted to make this clear for someone that might. <laughs> yes, thank just you. Like, yes. But on the other hand, you can also um, stumble into it and then get to a point where it becomes overwhelming because something gets triggered um, and you're on your own and yeah, you actually feel it is overwhelming so mm. and then you stop and that is that is not the point of it either yeah you will probably never go back to journaling ever again mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so you have to find that balance and when we stay in our bodies now we start with the way where you are actually safe um, and that is where you can always go back to so that is here and now in the present so now to your question where to start is actually in the here and now. And how I would start is um, go to a space, your space, make a space yours. Um, like I'm here in my room. Um, I can close the door. Uh, I, <laughs> I have everything I need around me and I feel absolutely safe in here. So I can cry, I can scream, I can write, I can have a great time. Um, it's always a good place to be. Uh, and that is important. Uh, I don't know where you are. Are you in a safe space? Yeah, I'm in my room here, in my beautiful room with my painting and I have a candle here and I'm in my cozy chair. Yeah. And I have the door closed because I don't live alone so that the interview doesn't take more background noise on. I have also uh, the window closed. I just noticed I have the door open. I think I'll close it. <laughs> <More safe. laughs> because Nobody. we also have cats. Nobody. Maybe they sometimes come in. Um, yes. But, and yeah um but no yeah okay. I, I i like to also even for those interviews even to create a space where i feel yes. um yeah. that i have like my tea um with the queen on it um <laughs> yeah with that's, my peppermint that's tea and i have you create some space, your space um where i feel so cozy that i can completely mm -hmm. let go mm -hmm. and be in the presence of beautiful. the other person really beautiful. thank you for asking and <laughs> if you don't have a whole room, you can just create a section in a room. Now mm. that's your corner where you have a table or a little desk or something where you have what you need and things that make you comfortable and mm. are, are really comfortable and that connect you to the present moment to here and now. And then uh, sit down and make yourself comfortable. And um, the way I start is sit down um, with your feet flat on the ground and your back straight and notice your breath. Breathe in and breathe out and notice your breath. And you can actually do a meditation, a small meditation. You now you can go and contact your body. How is my body? How am I today? You know? Is there something, how's my heart? Is my breath slow or fast? Uh, yeah. How am I sitting here in this space? And become aware of what is present. And that's what uh, focusing is also about. So you focus on the moment and you focus on your body. And your body usually is very smart. It's very intelligent. And it, it wants to tell you what it actually needs. It tells you what is. Very often we don't listen to it because we have other things in our head and we need to go here and there and we need to do this and that and we push it away <laughs> and uh, we're not listening to it and that can actually become a habit. So we have to undo this kind of learning 
and we relearn to listen to our bodies. Yeah? What, what is my body telling me now? What is your body telling you now? Mine, I have an itchy nose from the outside, but I mostly find this actually when I'm relaxing that I just get some tingles. And, you know, when I really just sit um, and focus and concentrate, then, yeah, it seems like I know it's just on the outside, not inside, but it's just like um, on top of here. It's just, um, I feel yeah. like a tingle. Um, but yeah, otherwise my body is um, cozy. What, what do you reckon that uh, means? What does your body want to tell you with your nose? Is I don't there know. anything that could be connected to that? Well, I mean, I have some essential oil open here that could be, and I diffuse something okay. there as well, because I found this really nice um, smelling nice things um, in my room as well, that in my space. You. Yeah, maybe I don't know, but like sometimes I just feel it's um. Well, what what I feel is that sometimes I think I got a lot of sunburns on my nose, <laughs> specifically in summer, and sometimes I feel like, um, I had like for a few weeks it's kind of um pimples on my nose, like, and I was like, what is this? Like, am I too acidic or um? But they're gone now, but I feel, um. I think, yeah, when I really relax, there's obviously some energy moving and it just goes to spaces and then it's kind of tingling. It might be, it's, it feels more like a healing kind of tingling because I feel really in the present moment and then, yeah. Uh, so a, a, a healing tingling. Um, now here is actually something that you could use as an exit point, um, access point. I, I can tell that you are very well in contact with your body in terms of healing and, and knowing what your body reactions are to certain things in your environment. Mm. Um, I also know that because I know you personally, but this comes out from this, even if I didn't know you, I could say, look, this may be actually an access point for you mm. to start um, Know, exploring your body from that point, uh, a healing, a healing tingling, yeah, and you could look further into that. Yeah. Um, um, we could also, you know, start in a in a different way. We could uh, say, have a look around. Uh, do you have a window in your room? Yes. Can you look outside? Um, yeah, I mean, I close the curtains a bit because I have a fence and <laughs> I know all my neighbors. And if I would sit here and they see me, everyone would wave <laughs> or knock on the window and say hi. Um, but yeah, I can see how. <laughs> a little okay. bit. You could look outside if you have access to window or you could look inside the room. So you could choose something outside that actually... Um, catches your attention so you would spend uh, a moment yeah after a quick meditation you could spend a moment just really observe carefully outside in yeah, nature I have some beautiful or whatever you see something that interests you something that stands out mm -hmm. and then and then capture that moment or if you haven't got outside you can also inside the space where you are you can you can focus on an object maybe mm -hmm. yeah you can choose an object that speaks to you where you think oh yeah this is something mm, i choose this and then you bring that in and then you actually describe what you are seeing so i'll leave it I'll leave it up to you. I don't know if we want to go through a session that might take yeah, some time. Yeah, I mean, I'm just, for example, see this beautiful green leaf because the sun is setting yeah. this way and the sun shines onto this green leaf. And now I can yeah. see all the different um, little, how do you call them? Veins, aiders, or veins, their little, yeah, yeah kind of um, arms. The leaf. Yeah, in their leaves. And that's possibly something because I really love the green as yeah. well it looks beautiful yeah. and okay that's a beautiful image that's yeah. a very beautiful image 
Um, that reminds me of the first time I did creative writing. I actually looked at leaves and I saw the movement of the leaves in the wind that were creating a movement in the shadow on the stem of a tree. Mm -hmm. And that, that constant movement of shadow forms actually caught my attention. And that was the picture that I worked with. Uh, then you can start uh, writing about this. And because we want to explore something we don't know yet, we don't want to explore uh, what we already know and what is obvious and what's just on the surface because we know that. So we want to go a bit deeper into our body. Our, our body has connected to something outside of us and there is actually a context for that. And we want to explore this. Um, you could describe this scene, this picture um, from three different perspectives. So you could look at it first from the third person. You're describing it like a witness. You could then describe it in the second person using the second person, so you and you dialogue with it. And then you can write about it in the first person. Yeah? You actually connect with this image and, and write about it from your perspective. So you have three different perspectives to work with. And that's quite tricky for the beginning to make that, that difference, that separation, but it actually creates more possibilities for you and to explore deeper something you normally don't even uh, take notice of. Yeah. And um, with, uh, with that writing, you can then think about the next step. Why do I actually want to write a journal? No, after this observation of this leaf, you can uh, say, ah, is there actually a situation in my life yeah, that um, is presented or represented here? Like for me with the shadows, it, it was you know, that I was reading through letters from my deceased father who wrote uh, from, from the war back to his mm. family. And for the first time I saw these letters and now that's, that was the ripples of the of the shadows on that stem, yeah. Those leaves that I saw. It was I was dealing here with the shadow of the past, and I explored that uh, quite quite deeply, and it was really mm. healing, absolutely healing. Um, so that is for example how you start and then you you write why why here yeah? why do i actually want to do journaling you look a bit deeper and you find um something that represents that that wish and uh it could be many different reasons and it's very individual so there is not one size fits all instructions and and mm. reasons to do journaling because it's a very open area very creative and that's what's the beauty of it uh, the same with focusing felt sense focusing it's very in individual there are a few rules that you can follow um, but it's actually very individual and mm. the rules that i would follow is that you actually enter a process it's not about result. It's actually about being in that process and that you open yourself to it. No self-criticism is the first rule. Never criticize what you write um, because we have, uh, we often have an inbuilt critique and that can be very scathing and very negative. You know? uh, we write everything, no, don't like it. But no judgments at all, uh, that you actually set the parameters for your journaling yourself and stick to them. It is a, it is a repetitive process, but how often you write, when you write is your decision and it can also adjust and change 
as long as you actually commit to the process. Um, because over time, the beauty is that over time you see a pattern forming and you learn, you become more confident to get in touch with your feelings and to express them in words. Because yeah, uh, very often, yeah, I write in English, but that's not my first language. So I'm not, I'm not a native speaker and I still write in English. So sometimes it is a process that takes time because you know, I have another language in between this. Mm, yeah. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say that because I think it's um, like one thing I want to say is that I think it's actually really amazing because, you know, like starting maybe with a leaf and describing that or being the third person um, might get you also closer to you because it might be easier to write in the third person and then become at one point to maybe you are the leaf and yeah. you're just writing out of the view yeah. of the leaf yeah. and then you just so depending on I feel in which state you are in as well it might help you really to um, come closer to to the process that you said but also I just actually wanted to say that with the languages as we both bilingual um, that um, it's possibly really interesting also discovering journaling through um, whether you write in your mother language or a language you later learned or mm. uh, whether you maybe write because I mean okay we both speak English and German but then at the same time also we learned possibly English later and didn't speak it right as well with our parents when we were young um, which possibly is also different um, difference and and for example for me to quickly share this I found for example I said this to my friend yesterday because I really found like English is my emotional language. Like I can, for example, express my emotions um, really easier. And I also found it's an easier language for me because we don't have this formal um, speech to someone because everyone is their first name and you, or at least most yeah. of the time, it's a bit more informal. And I feel like that comes to me much easier also to connect. Um, Why I feel German to me is sometimes really um I can be emotional but like it's I feel like it's a bit harder and also harder to connect with people because you never know do you need to be formal now or at which stage in your relationship are you to be to say uh, Miss Mashik or uh, is Sylvia Z or you or you know so yeah um yeah if you want to say something about the lightness that. rules and all that yeah 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 so, very interesting. And I mean, in different cultures, different languages, there are different distances between speakers mm. and, and hurdles that have to be overcome and also uh, ritually overcome before you actually have this closeness. While in English, everybody is you. Hey, you. <laughs> that mm. even my professor um, at university is you. And that was for me at the beginning very confronting because. I just couldn't get used to it. Um, but it's also but nice that you're on one level. level, you know, because you're on yeah. a, I feel like you're, it's, um, it's even if someone is a professor or works in a bank, you still say their first name. And I feel like yeah. it has yes. something also, didn't, um, how do you say this? Um, um, I can't remember the word now, but like it just has something freeing because it's on a, on a level. Yeah, liberating things because like, you're just on eye level with each other. There's not like you, the yeah. student here and I'm professor here. It's like, yes. it's kind of like this equal um, being. And I, I quite like that. And I think um, through language and, and these kind of little things, I feel this is really um, makes a really difference also in the interaction and the relation to a person. Mm. Well, that's the uh, same thing at schools, no? Um, yeah. At some schools, you have teacher and student connection. The only thing is then you can question how honest is that? Because in the end, the teacher will mark the student. Yeah. <laughs> then there is the inequality. So is it actually the illusion of equality? Yeah, true. Um, I just hmm. met an adult now, <laughs> not in yeah. kids and... Yeah not in kids and adults I just meant yeah, in, yeah. in adults um, but a very interesting yeah. point that you considered here mm. um 
that is important for many other um, uh, foreign speakers, foreign language speakers. But there is a good news. <laughs> yes. There is also nonverbal language, body language. Yeah. And the nonverbal body language is to a certain degree universal, even though there can be uh, certain gestures um, represented differently in different cultures, there is a basic body language that we all understand. And this is actually what we want to explore first with the, with the journaling. So we, we explore nonverbal. That's what I do with uh, my therapeutic arts practice. So that's why the um, aesthetic form or yeah, aesthetic form is in a very open sense uh, is very important to my books. So I can actually decide what format my book is. Very often I start my books with deciding uh, a, a theme maybe. And if you want, I can show some examples here. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, what, um, can you actually see that? There's more sunlight yeah. interfering here. Can you yeah, see? Yeah, that's it? good, yeah. Uh, this is one possibility of actually writing in, in a letter form, no? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and I um, integrated, uh, it's hard to see, integrated envelopes that can be opened. Oh, cool, yeah. Oops. Mm -hmm. So there can be elements in there, you know, where you do letter writing and that sometimes helps to get started. You start writing a letter, maybe to yourself, maybe to somebody. They may never be um, meant to be sent. What is that song? Nights in white satin letters are written, never meaning to say. Um, yeah, so envelopes. You can also collect material different days in, in separate envelopes. Yeah, What day is today that uh, you can write it on the envelope and you can collect things that you find in nature. You can write keywords. You can write a poem, you can write a sentence, you can add other material. It could be yeah, from a, a snippet from, the, from a magazine uh, that you want to use in the collage. You can just collect things. Yeah? Day one, you don't need to write anything at all. You just collect something, collect images, collect things outside. Um, that can be also, uh, yeah, it doesn't have to be a small uh, letter envelope. That can be also bags that you create. Mm. Um, that is a bag that I created, <laughs> made out of uh, clear, sorry, that's the <laughs> keyboard here. Um, that is a uh, clear material and what I did then is I made a book that goes into it. And this is actually the shape of a house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is the sunlight as bad? Yes, as it's, it it's like it's a, um, yeah. yeah, that's better. It's like that's the show better. light now, the sunlight. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, it's um, okay. Uh, yeah, no, that's uh, good. Yeah, yeah, you can see it. Can you can you see it? Because mm -hmm. I just have a small picture in the corner, and I don't know if there is actually anything visible. <laughs> Never mind. So here, um, this book is called Architecture of Healing, and that was about my mother when she passed away, and um, it was about our house. You no, know? my my room in the house. Yeah. Uh, and the architecture in my village and mm. um, yeah, there is, a, there is a lot in there of my 
personal story, but all in pictures. Mm -hmm. There's hardly um, any words in there, but maybe one picture that I really like. <coughs> and I always work with two sides because they correspond the left and the the left and the right side. So here on this side, there is a material that I just found. It was just Hessian material that I stuck in, in repeating the house shape. And there's a tree in the middle of it. So it's very organic. And mm. on the other side, there is a, a, a foil, a plastic foil that looks like wood. And on there, I cut out some bits from the advertising <coughs> material. And on the top, there is a tea bag. And the tea bag says, you probably can't read it. Can you? No. The uh, tea bag said, life is like a cup of tea. It's all in how you make it. <laughs> so this is a, a visual expression of, um, oops, of me dealing with the past. And you no, know, it was a it was a goodbye to my mother, and um, I was there for her when she passed away, and it was it was very deeply touching, of course. Mm. But I also had to work through this house and the history and the story we had, and let it go, and this helped me, yeah. To, to see the beauty of the moment, to let it go. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, a big process. So anyway. is this what you meant with non-verbal? Yeah. So visual journaling can be a start. Yeah, if you feel words don't really express what I want to say, you can work with images, um, collages, uh, you can be inspired by music. You know, I often get inspired by music. Uh, you can use other books. This, <laughs> this book, uh, Belonging by Nora Krug, uh, American, uh, German American, that has really inspired the book that um, I, uh, the journal book that I just made. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very interesting book, you no know, working also images and words. Mm -hmm. um, you can work biographically. Um, there is, sorry, just lost a page. There is a book here. It's an ebook, and that's really not expensive. It's by, it's called Biography Logbook by Karl-Heinz Finke and Laura Summerfield. Uh, it's, um, it's a more anthroposophic approach, but it's very helpful because they look life at life as a river, you know, the river of life. And you follow in seven, in the rhythm of seven years and uh, different phases that you go through in your life. And you look what happened. And there are key events around the lunar nodes, for example, where <laughs> most people, something life-changing happens. And yeah, that has inspired me greatly. Um, I can write them down if anyone- Yeah, really... we can put them in the show notes and then, yeah, yeah beautiful, yeah. thank you. Uh, then I have here a book that a former student, art student, has given to me. That's uh, Rainer Maria Rilke, uh, a, a famous poet, 19th century. Um, a Year with Rilke. So there is a poem of his a day. For every day, there's one poem. And very often that inspires me. And my book is full of quotes from poets and, and wise people. So it can be Mahatma Gandhi, uh, Maya Angelou, mm. Bilke, um, Jack Kornfeld, many people have said incredible words of wisdom. And 
I use them to inspire me and I apply them to my life or see where they apply in my life because they are very human and they apply to everyone. Mm. Uh, more examples you could, you know, you can change your format. With the book now, I have started with an A3 scrapbook. Mm -hmm. And then I've cut it down to yeah, uh, a square, which is uh, this, this is my book now. <laughs> you get little off cuts here. <laughs> and that is actually another format. Some people might be attracted to that format. Mm. And I have done books in that format. And they, they're also very good notebooks you can take anywhere you go because they are slim. And you can, you can make several out of one big one. And you can always have it in your bag. And you can always have a pen. And if you feel like, oh, yeah, I should write that down. That's a good thought. You just write it because by the time you get home and sit down, it's gone. So mm -hmm. maybe you get used to doing that wherever you are. Yeah, I guess if you're possibly also a technical person, you could possibly, I sometimes record my voice on my phone quickly when I feel yeah, like good. Um, I take my yeah. voice recording because um, then I can write it down later. Um, yeah. and, sometime, and I think also... Well, because I often copy quotes or if I read something or I take screenshots of things that I mm -hmm. really like. So you could possibly even do like a photo collage. I don't know, print them out or, yes. or even, yeah. a, I mean, there are programs on your computer if you're more the technical person um, where you can make like a whole um, slideshow with, um, you know, things. Yeah. Um, I guess depends on whether you're a tactile person or you're good in having visuals yeah. on your computer. But yeah, you don't have to stick with one. You do one project and maybe give yourself, uh, you say, okay, four weeks, I give myself these four weeks and you give yourself uh, some topic to explore uh, or yeah, some experience to explore. Uh, maybe I'm going around the neighborhood what interests me in my neighborhood? You go with your phone camera around the neighborhood and you take pictures. And you take a picture of anything that interests you. And maybe you become more focused on things. Yeah. Maybe uh, the famous one is the letter boxes, but you know, there, are, <laughs> there are other things that you could be interested in. Uh, and and then you come home and you look at the material mm -hmm. and then you actually, because it's a lot of material that accumulates very quickly when you commit to the process, mm. you can actually, um, you can take a few things from that and then start to use that mm. in, a, in a meaningful way. Yeah. So it doesn't need to mean anything straight away. You just have an interest. It's intuitive. It's spontaneous. Mm -hmm. And you use that and then you work with that and then you find a form for it. Um, yeah, that is, for example, a, a book I made while, while being on holiday. Um, it, it was actually something for uni I had to write. And... It's a homemade book, so I love bookmaking techniques. I love to make my own books, uh, visual diaries as well as written diaries. This one is written because I had to write text for uni and the pages are ripped. Yeah, I just ripped pages. And there was uh, the connection was an experience of weaving. Mm -hmm. And so each chapter deals with kind of weaving something together. Mm -hmm. And that actually turned into my um, work that I handed in, which mm -hmm. <laughs> was an embodied inquiry topic. Yeah. Uh, it had a, a, big, a big book. 
with images in there yeah mm -hmm. as well where um i've worked through some materials uh, that we explored uh, belonging we explored some mm. drawings that we did and we also have some i have a whole recording of a presentation in here on mm -hmm. cd so yeah, there thanks. are there are lots of possibilities um you can do recordings um you can also be very spontaneous and um, I'm, uh, I like using time when I travel where I can't do anything. So here I just took a little um, commercial diary that I was given once. And in a hotel where I was staying just for a short time, you know, uh, in the um, inter travel, um, there was a little sewing kit. Yeah, hard to see, isn't it? And yeah, I just okay. cut a hole into the page and did some sewing <laughs> with a string that I found in the hotel sewing kit. Nice. And oh, I don't cool. know if you can see that I worked with holes, you know, piercing through. Yeah, yeah. And okay. I, I played with that theme, you know? Yeah, okay. cool. <laughs> and, then, and then the more, oops. It's starting to fall out. I always have a glue stick and a scissors and sewing kit with me. Yeah, nice. Um, I think it's also you could advertising material that yeah. is actually yeah, lying around somewhere. Everything can be integrated. I cut out words and put them together. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's also you can make this kit. <laughs> kind of yeah, you can make this vision boards as well, right? Where you can possibly stick on and on and on yeah. things or collect things and put them on top of each other um yeah that is uh, i did that um with this one where i actually made myself puzzle pieces mm -hmm. i made 75 puzzle pieces in here and i stuck them on the wall and each of them had something that had meaning. So here, this references voice memo that I have actually used here, yeah? like you described, you do mm -hmm. voice memo. Mm -hmm. In the morning, when I wake up, I do a voice memo straight away before I can think before anything enters my mind, I just do a voice memo. And that catches you, you know, before it before your thoughts are too um, distracted you're still in that early morning stage where where you're connected with your whole um, body and mind it's not mm -hmm. separated into I have to do this I have to do that this is how I have to present myself it's still you <laughs> at that early stage hopefully mm -hmm. uh, you can also yeah, that's, a, that's another book that I have actually made. Um, and first I did, uh, I worked with paint. Uh, mm -hmm. I love the artist um, Gerhard Richter. And um, I've used a technique that he does to scrape paint over canvases. He does it on a large scale. I can't work on a large scale like that. I just haven't got a chance, you know? And it probably wouldn't look good, but on a small scale, I can do it. <laughs> and I did one of those paintings every day. Mm -hmm. So there is one for each day. Yeah. And, and then I actually added on a, on a little transparent paper, I added some keywords, you know? of when when I did that painting, uh, what it actually meant, what it speaks to me about, for example, here. Um, uh, that uh, I'll show you in a sec. It says letting go, ready for everything nonverbal. And that is the painting that mm -hmm. go with it. Yeah, nice. 
So, and the whole book I call Resonance. Mm -hmm. Now you definitely have some treasures collected resonance. there. Yeah. You definitely yeah. have some treasures uh, collected there. So. I love every book. Yeah, it's yeah. lovely. It's a part oh, of me. That's beautiful. <laughs> yeah it's even like so, once you're not there anymore dormant moss have like a beautiful collection of their mom's kind of beauty and thoughts and this is nice to also create mm -hmm. something like this i beautiful. hope they can appreciate it but the, the last book cool. is certainly the biographic work is family history worked into it so that is actually dedicated to them mm. Um, yes. Yeah, there's another another thing. You can just start with photos. No, you, that's also an access point. Look at photos. Yeah. Um, photos and the way I started the the book. Do we still have time? Or yeah, we have like ten minutes maybe. Mm. So the way I started here in yeah in the book that I'm just in the process of completing, yeah. it's got um, 135 pages now. I didn't really expect it to go that far, <laughs> but it, I just let it evolve. And every day it's a surprise, and and um, that is actually the beauty of it because we can discover ourselves and we mm. discover something about ourselves that we that we have never looked at before and we can see our life in a new light or we can uh, perceive our environment in a new light if we're not repeating the habitual way of yeah. looking at it if we explore wider we can actually connect with a part of ourself um, that that has that intuitive innate wisdom that is healing and that is positive and creative and i found sometimes I also i write well. things down that like when i'm really emotional and i just need to sort my thoughts and then i sometimes just yeah. burn it yeah. <laughs> just hmm. to there's a few people who do that <laughs> who, you know, have like a little kind of um, ceremony to let this go um, on a, some conscious level or something. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Which I find also sometimes nice because um, it's not specifically some things that I don't really want to read again because they possibly more have like a negative emotionally connection. Um, yeah. And it's just kind of nice having this ceremony. I think fire does something to it compared to throwing it in a bin. I think fire yeah. just, uh, no one can see it ever fire. again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Phoenix is a, is a creative being. Um, but at the same time, yeah, um, that is really welcome whatever comes and also welcome that, uh, that burning ceremony if you do it consciously and if you actually feel what's happening in your body but uh, there is another way of trying things out you know once you have done where you have burned uh, a lot of your writing maybe one day your feeling is okay what happens if I don't burn it no you sit with that moment comes when you're ready for it if you listen to it if you're open to it yeah, your mind may open one day to what it actually says. What is this experience that I have been burning uh, a million times before and it's still coming back because it doesn't go away. It wants some attention. And then you look at it and then you stay with it. Felt sense focusing is perfect for those things that we rather sometimes you know, <laughs> run away from or burn or <laughs> do all kinds of things with. And then we actually stay with it, mm. but stay in the present moment. We don't want that negativity to overwhelm us and mm. trigger us and you know, lose the plot over it. What we can do is stay with it and um, emotions are constantly in flux. If we're not stuck on something, we can actually sit with it, 
you slow down, you actually observe without judgment. What does it do to me? What does this um, say? What, what, how is my body reacting? What is triggered? And welcome it. Welcome it and give it some expression. And that's what you can do in a journal. Mm. Now, this is fe the feeling I feel stuck here. Why? What is it actually doing to me? And if you welcome it and listen to it and come to a point where you can actually accept it and maybe one day you can even embrace it um, and, and then let it go and move on, but in a very conscious way, you can actually pre befriend yourself. Yeah, it's a process of befriending all parts of yourself. You can then live with more integrity and more authenticity because you're not judging and sensing this experience I want and this I don't want. Mm. That's yeah, that's human. That's what yeah. we do. I like this, I don't like that. I want to be this, I don't want to be that. Um, but sometimes we are something and there are parts of ourselves we have actually um, pushed away because we are ashamed, we are embarrassed, uh, something, yeah, something with them we just can't accept. Mm -hmm. And they will come back, they will, they will confront us again and again and again until they knock on the door and say, here, I'm still here. <laughs> Let me in. And you can say, okay, I've, uh, I've pushed you up a uh, million times. Okay, what have you got? What mm -hmm. have you got to say? What is there? And mm -hmm. actually listen and then say, oh, I welcome you. And how can I deal with you? What do you need me to do to actually console or heal or reconcile or just just plainly accept mm -hmm. yeah amazing i think this is um yeah really nice uh inside of journaling is there anything you want to share that i haven't asked you <laughs> uh, i'm trying to think I think we have actually covered yeah, a lot I of think so too. Yeah. Uh, important is though, when you are in a situation like that, when you're facing something, you know, like um, I did this year with all the things going on around us, which was already hard to cope with. And then I actually looked at my father's letters and you know my German background and that terrible war that happened that usually pulls me down and I feel I feel incredible shame um, because yeah my father was involved in the war he didn't have a choice but that doesn't matter you know people look at you you know you're from Germany oh yeah the picture is already there and eh, It has nothing to do with me. That's why I disconnected from this part of myself, from the past, from that history. And I'm now, I have throughout the whole COVID period, I have actually befriended this part of myself, of my personal history. And I actually have found positivity through it and acceptance. Mm -hmm. And I still love my father for what, he was to me and yeah, he was my idol and mm. I had completely blocked out all that history. That's what whole, the whole of Germany did. All those people mm. who didn't die in the war, there was no monument. There was no monument with a name on it, no died as a hero in the war. They, people survived and how they lived They, they were silenced. All their experiences were taboo. They were humiliating experiences and you know, they were defeat. They were not allowed mm -hmm. to speak about it. And that has had an effect on me, on the next generation. And I don't want that to hand on to my boys. So mm -hmm. I had to deal with it. 
I had to yeah. deal with it if I want or not. And COVID actually, yeah, as bad as the situation was, it has been an opening. And those letters that turned up through my cousin in Germany, it was just magic. Mm -hmm. And I have actually really integrated a lot more of mm -hmm. that past and that shameful mm -hmm. history. And I have yeah. faced my own shame and, and come to terms with it. And yeah, I'm human. I'm vulnerable uh, like everyone else. And if yeah. we can admit that, mm. it actually makes us stronger. Even I think you said stronger. already what I wanted to ask you next, but I just wanted to ask you whether there's something you would, through your experience, I always ask that everyone like share um, from your heart, you know, something that yeah. you would like the world to know what's important for you. What, yeah. what do you think? Uh, Yeah, that that was already, you're right, that was yeah. already, that was from my heart. And I have also worked uh, with Maradi on that because I needed another person to share that with. So to mm -hmm. a certain degree, I can actually do my own work here in the journaling, but I needed another person to, to dialogue with mm -hmm. and to actually talk about these very private feelings of shame. Mm -hmm and yeah. to admit to another person what I was feeling, because when it is witnessed, then it's actually more real. And then, mm -hmm. you know, I have, <laughs> I have the... integrated it as a real experience, not just in my head. Yeah. It's okay. a real life experience now. Mm. And I'm very grateful for that. Yeah? Yeah. Sometimes I cried, but that's fine. No, I'm not stuck with it. As long as I can let go, I, I can sit with those feelings. And uh, crying is cleansing. Yeah. Life is a bit like laughing and crying. Yeah. But the world is a stage. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's not only one thing. It's not only laughing. It's not only good. Mm. We can open the full spectrum. We are much happier and much more generous with others and ourselves as well. So courage, I want to share. Yeah. <laughs> For the process. Awesome. Courage and curiosity. <laughs> I think you did because you showed um, so many possibilities. So I think um, people will be inspired, encouraged and um I hope so. and, yeah <laughs> I hope so. and then maybe we can um yeah we can share maybe your details if people want to contact you or um also want to know more about your art therapy and also um yeah maybe if you write down some of the books you mentioned maybe some people are interested in um, having a look at those as well yeah Sure. Well, thank you so I much. A lot, a lot more books. I know. <laughs> of you. So there is lots of things yeah. that are inspiring, and yeah. Uh, yeah, and then people find their own things on top of it. But I'm also very happy that um, I can be uh, a companion for people if they want to go through that process with yeah. somebody. Of course. Awesome. That's great. Thank you so much for sharing Thank all this. Thank you so much, Lina. Thank you so much. It was my pleasure. <laughs> Ciao. Bye. Bye.